3,000 delegates, including some of the world's most influential finance ministers, central bankers and business leaders, converged for four days of discussions, workshops and lectures. Equality and inclusive development were this year's key themes, with the bank acknowledging that although inequality has declined in many member countries, some 326 million people continue to live in extreme poverty. So how can we ensure that the poorest people aren't left behind in this rapidly changing world? One way, via technology. The so-called fourth industrial revolution promises to fundamentally alter the way we live, work and communicate. The possibilities of billions of people having access to information and services look set to level the playing field in nearly every industry and sector. But how can we pay for the upgrade? How can we make sure it's done properly? And what are the benefits, both long-term and short-term, to economies and societies? It is being called the fourth industrial revolution. Is this the right way to describe what you're seeing? I think in many ways it is a fourth industrial revolution. And when, when we go through the history of the first, the second, the third, the fourth, then you understand how it's you know, factory lines, it's automation, it's computer um, assisted work. To go into a fourth industrial revolution does a lot of things. It is a sea change. Um, certainly robotics is going to change the way we do work. Certainly artificial intelligence, machine learning, all these things I think will help inform and hopefully change things for the better. Nandita, let me bring you in on that exact question. Um, thank you. You know, we talk about the fourth industrial revolution. In the energy sector, we say we're in the third energy revolution, which is the transition to renewables. And, you know, all three of these have been fired by technological innovation. And what we're seeing right now um, in the energy space is just remarkable. And I, I saw a very interesting article recently, I think it was in the Washington Post, that said that it's very likely that the next billion people around the world lifted out of poverty will be powered up the economic ladder by solar cells. So, you know, the impact of this is, is huge. Minister, let me bring you in here because Sri Lanka is a great example of what can be done when we're talking about the impetus for this kind of change. The challenges we face uh, are many. In fact, as I mentioned in a recent speech in Sri Lanka, the, there's uh, the choice between uh, be before us is whether we are going to enter into a what I would call a new Athenian age of innovation and creativity, or uh, go into uh, another period of high unemployment. And Sri Lanka, for example, produces the highest number of accountants, I believe, in uh, <laughs> any part of the world other than India. <laughs> uh, but we have also been told that, uh, that by 2030, accountants will be redundant with the, with, with the advent of artificial intelligence. So we have to prepare ourselves from now on and we are taking that into consideration. Um, Takahiko, let me bring you into the conversation here because of course at the ADB um, you've done a lot of work, a lot of research into what this, these kind of changes are going to mean um, for the Asian region as a whole, for reducing poverty, reducing uh, inequality and, of course, economic growth? Uh, technology is, uh, uh, is uh, a very important topic for Asian economies today. About uh, the impact of uh, technologies on uh, jobs, uh, new technologies on the jobs, uh, from the uh, period of uh, first uh, industrial revolution, there were always fears that new technologies will replace uh, uh, the uh, jobs. Uh, in some sectors, it happened uh, to some workers, but at the same time, there are new occupations. So I don't much worry about uh, the uh, overall impact. Of course, uh, there are some people who are behind, so the government should address these issues. But when I visit countries, uh, uh, including Sri Lanka, uh, all other countries, I saw or uh, impressed by the uh, interest of uh, the ministers and leaders on this issue.
Hi, I'm Tanya Breyer, and that was just a taster of what you can find on CNBC Life. For more award-winning content, just click on the videos. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching.